Listen, so last week, how many were blessed by the message on last week? Come on. Well, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do, we can cut the lights down. What we're trying to do is get us ready for October. What's getting ready to take place in October is in an area that we have not ventured into before. We've, at, at, you know, since we've been Greater Faith, we have not had to have two services. And this was not our intent even when we put up this structure. And God just keeps sending and sending and sending. And so now we're having some growing pains. We got people that are coming from all over, and they're asking to be used by God. Come on, say amen. Amen. People that have been stagnated in former ministries, people that have sat back and they just want more from God. And so in order to get prepared for us to serve the congregation, to serve the community, to serve those that are out here in our area, there's a certain way that we need to conduct business as the people of God. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing, but I'm, I'm going to ring your doorbell. It's, it, it wasn't the world that kept me from church. It was church folk. I'm preaching already. I knew the world. I hung with them. I partied with them. Amen. I, I rolled dice, shot dice with them, ran the streets with them. But when I got to church, I was looking for understanding. I was looking for compassion. I was looking not to be judged, not for someone to turn their nose up at me or roll their eyes who called themselves children of God. You're still not saying that I'm making it a little more plain. If anybody should understand my faults and my laudable undertakings, it's those that have said that Jesus saved them. And if you're saved, I need to know what you've been saved from, that you would judge me. And so there's a particular way, there's a particular, there's a particular posture that we're asking uh, those of us that are in, serve, in, in the position to serve to conduct themselves. And so our hope for you, it's up on the screen, uh, you can click the QR code. Thank you. Click the QR code to receive your enrollment, uh, your presentation package, okay? Click that so you can get the information and so that when you send it back, they'll give you, get your email and send you what you need in order to finish the course as we're talking about it. All right, so let's talk about our hope for you. Let's put it up there. Our hope for you. Oh, we transition. Here we go. Our hope for you is that uh, that you take Steps towards understanding how you uniquely design and your personality fits. Coupled with spiritual gifts, God has given you help, uh, giving you help, reveal a fulfilling path to your destiny. So it's all about taking that first step. Sometimes when we join church, when we were coming up, we immediately got into ministry. If you were like me, you got into areas that you knew you weren't gifted in. I'm trying to be honest. Like, where my church at? I know we got some. But let me talk to my people. You were, you were on the usher because your cousin then was on the usher. <laughs> you was in the choir and you couldn't sing. And when they wanted to try to figure out who was off key, you started pretending. <laughs> and they kept they keep having to stop during rehearsal talking about who is that? <laughs> and it was you. It was me too. Yeah, so and so and so and so we understand here at Greater Faith that if you're going to be in ministry, we want you to be in a place that you're gifted, that you love doing. Because if you love doing it, we won't have to make you. Come on, where are my OCD people at that just love cleaning? If somebody spills stuff, well, we need you on the cleaning ministry. Come on, y'all. Where are my people that smile all the time that can talk, start a conversation in an empty room? Where you at? You need to be at the front door. <laughs> so Proverbs 25 and 2 says, before I bring Lady up, says, it is God's privilege to conceal things and our privilege to discover them. Together, let's discover all that God has planned for our generation and make a positive difference for the kingdom of God. Let me put it, let me put it like this right here. You thought there well, was nobody around you because then nobody wanted to deal with you. But how many, how many of you would testify that sometimes God has to hide you from you? Yeah, there, there's some things. It's not that he don't want you to have it, but sometimes he has to hide it for you. So that if he gives it to you too quick, then you'll be abused, you'll be misused by people. People will run you down. People will wear you out. And so sometimes God has to hide you. Sometimes your best place of hiding is in your problems. 
Y'all don't catch that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it live for you. When you're going through your problems, that's when you really see who like you. People will step away from you when you're dealing with issues. And God will let you stay there so that all of the excess people and weight will fall off. And while you're sitting there, he's developing you, maturing you, and growing you so that when he brings you out, now you see who really with you. Yeah, kind of like Easter. Do you hide the eggs for the kids or do you hide them from the kids? You hide them for. You put each one of them out there in hopes. Well, there's some things in you that God placed in you. He ain't hiding it from you. He's hiding it for you so that he can eventually use you to be a blessing to somebody else. And we're getting ready to show you how and why certain people can't deal with you. Come on, say amen. amen. I think I got another scripture. Let's put it up there. Do I got another one? Yeah, Ephesians 2.10 says this. For we are his workmanship created where? For what? Which God prepared beforehand. You mean before I told my first lie? You mean to tell me before I did my first drink? This is why your problems couldn't stop you. Because there is a work that he's placed in you that you got to put your hands on. And he's not going to stop until you do. And this is why in some ministries you just sat there. How many of you were frustrated? You were frustrated because there was more in you than what you were in. So let's discover it. <laughs> Bay, don't start. Come on now. Good afternoon, Greater Faith. Um, and thank you for this opportunity, Bishop, to uh, tag up with you. And um, so while we're talking about the actual... Um, spirits, uh, spiritual gifts that we'll get more into next week, let's talk about your personality first, because you can have the gifting, but you're still hard to deal with. All right, so let's, let's back up, and this is a good, I'm holding up a great big mirror so you can see you, because a lot of times I want you to stand in your truth so you can be the best version of yourself. Bishop, where you going? I know where I'm gifted at. So I don't like to um, pick on anyone, so I'm going to use myself, and of course I'm going to use Bishop <laughs> as the example. Here we go. All right, so let's start off with your personality. You know, we always talk about a personality. A personality is what makes you, you. Okay? You know, a lot of times, you know, I, I've done this before when we've done other um, next steps in the smaller uh, atmosphere. Uh, we talk about such things as um, Bishop. I use Bishop as an example. He is my thug for life. He is a thug for Christ. All right. That's what makes him him. There is nobody like him. There is nobody like you. When we talk about other personalities, we use the word messy. Okay, so what makes a messy personality? Why you had to say messy after my name? It's not you. That, that's not you, Bishop. Oh, okay. That's not you, Bishop. So when we say messy, what makes people messy? Okay, just, just think in your head those types of characteristics that make them them. Okay, now let, let's, um, this, is your, this is your scripture, Bishop. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going backwards. Okay. All right. So look at this picture right here. It looks like an accident picture, doesn't it? It's, it's not really focused on anything. Does anybody have any thoughts? 
Why did I put that picture up there? It looked like you're being messy. Does anybody want to guess who's in the picture? Who's that look like? Can't tell? Okay. So actually the picture is my sister who was here last week um, and is also a friend of mine. Now I am behind my sister that has the capris on, but you can't see me. Now, what about the vantage point of the person taking the picture? Why isn't a close picture? Because we're not posed for the picture. Somebody did what? Snuck and tuck. Somebody being messy. Being messy. <laughs> exactly. Somebody snapped a picture. Okay, next slide. Okay, so I got this. So I was in Birmingham standing there talking to my friend and my sister and I get this text. I got eyes on you. It wasn't me. So, you know, so when that happens, because, you know, what happens, what do you do? You're doing like this. Okay. So I'm in Birmingham at dinner and guess who sends me the text? My daughter in Tuscaloosa. Her friend that didn't speak to me took the picture, sent it to her. To tell, that's being messy, isn't it? But the biggest point I want you to know about this is the fact that people are always watching you. People are always watching you. So however you behave, it's being watched. Okay? So let's be aware of our personality. All right. So, okay. So the four types, uh, we're going to do a DISC assessment. Okay, y'all put your papers down. I'm going to give y'all time to fill it out. And I'm going to give y'all good instruction. So just relax. It's not anything I'm grading. And it's just a self-assessment for you. So the DISC assessment, there are four major types, okay? D-I-S-C, all right, your Ds, those, those dominant people, those, those direct people, say what they mean, mean what they say, all right? I'm not even gonna ask for a show of hands, okay? Your eyes, the eyes are inspiring and impressive. These are the ones you like to be around, they the life of the party, um, uh, a great car salesman will probably be an I. Now, you're not going to get a lot done with them in a group because they're real concerned with everybody and what everybody thinks, okay? You ever heard of that squirrel mentality with that person? This is a person, they, not, they can't make a decision very much. What they're going to do is, y'all, do y'all want to do that? Well, no, it's, it's okay with you, well, if we don't, we can do something else. Nothing's being done. Squirrels, what do squirrels do? They start to cross the road, then they change their mind, and what happens? They get hit, not making a decision. Okay, those are your eyes. All right, your S's. S's are steady, stable, they analytical. Now, um, this is the way we always done it, Pastor. So you really going to be unnerved here at Greater Faith because we never do things the same way. In the praise team, songs not the same, all types, okay? So that kind of unnerves you a little bit because this is the way we always have done, all right? So again, I can see this helping you at home. I can see this helping you at work. But most importantly, think about these types of people here at Greater Faith. Your C's, your C's are very compliant, okay? They very much buy the book. They love policies, no gray lines, that's just it. Now, I love Damon because Damon is probably a C. He works with finances. We need somebody following the books so IRS isn't down here and we're in, and we're in trouble. 
Okay, so there's a place for all of us. There is no wrong personality. There's no wrong personality. But there's always opportunities for growth wherever you are. Okay, now some of you all may say, um, I'm not a D all the time. Okay, <laughs> and you probably aren't. You're probably a combination of that. And so once we do the assessment, once you find out where you are, um, if you register for the course, you will get a whole breakdown after we finish the assessment. Can I say something? Yes. Those people that are Ds, they don't get along with people too well. <laughs> so most, most of the time when we have someone that's real dominant in personality, we don't give them a whole lot of people under their charge because eventually they're going to run them away. Right, right. I need you to think about your job now. We're saying this in ministry, but we're talking work too now. That if you're a D, you don't care about feelings. I just want it done. So we had a couple of staff members that were Ds, and we kept them in the back. All they did was, was administration. Uh, Elder D. Ward, she, she didn't care nothing about your feelings. This is how it's going to be done. If you don't want to do it and you upset, go stand in the corner by yourself. We getting ready to do it. All right. The types that we have, the percentages that I have up there, um, is the percentage of the population that is 100% one of these, okay? Again, most of us are a combination of this, but for the most part, 3% of the population are Ds. Straight, dogmatic, divisive, all of that. Um, Bs, okay? So 11%, about 10%. Of the population is the I. C's, all right, I mean S's. These are the steady, they like, they, they don't like change. So we're saying almost 70% of the population don't like change. Can I jump in there? Yes. How many of you have been part of ministries that they've done it the same way? After a while, if you don't change, you don't grow. And if you don't grow, you die off. So now you can see why most of our ministries probably got one or two more generations in it. Because if colleges are changing, you don't wear the same hairstyle today that you wore in the 50s. Everything else is changing but the house of God. All right. Oh, so I got scripture in there. I praise you because I am what? Fearfully. God knows everything about you. He didn't make any mistakes. Whatever he needs for you to do, you're already equipped to do it. And your life that you're living and the experiences where you're getting ready to learn is the reason why you've developed some of the things that you're capable of doing. Amen? All right, let's keep going. How do we come up with the personality that we have? You know, it may be my mama had road rage. I got road rage. <laughs> How you see people handle things a lot of times teaches you how to handle things even without you knowing it, okay? Is it the training? Now, a lot of times, you know, people are, and there's nothing against therapy, you realize how not to get worked up over this. How to handle this better. So you seek help. You're going to programs and, and treatments and those kinds of things to be your better version of yourself. Mentors. You don't have to necessarily have an official mentor. You may see how someone handles things and that is your mentor. It may be somebody you just see on Facebook. It may be just a class. It may be somebody you have never really face-to-face -face interacted with. But this is the person that you glean some of your characteristics and or your personality from. So I started off out of college um, working in the emergency department. Okay, so I was all about trauma, blood and guts, and that kind of thing. Now, 
inside whenever there was a major emergency, I was like this. But I would look at certain nurses, and if they weren't stressed out, I wasn't stressed out. If Bishop has everything in control, the house is in control. So he is our mentor. He is someone we look to for guidance, how things are managed, and how we deal with ourselves. The other thing, of course, is our life experiences. Sometimes, you know, you ever wonder with two children, why are my children so different? They got the same parents. This one cries all the time. This one's feelings hurt. So this is how I have to deal with this person, and this is how I have to deal with this person. So your life experiences has a lot to do with shaping your personality. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into this uh, before Bishop speaks. So the, the next thing is this. At any given time, you're capable of doing any given thing. And if you don't believe that, you're going to be the first person to do that, okay? You could kill someone. You could, okay? You could curse someone out and not be a cursor at any given time. So life experiences, what you go through, helps you to be stronger. Sometimes it's wiser. And also, it may contribute when we get into next week, the development of your spiritual gifting with discernment. Babe, you're being too nice. Let me, uh, let, me, let, me, let me go back to that family history. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go back to that family history. Y'all know we got some crazy family members. And some of them have been so crazy so long that people say, y'all, well, you just, that's just hot. Come on, y'all. That's just how the girl. Don't, 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 don't worry. Well, that's just how they. That's just and, and 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 because we've been brought up in that hostile environment, we sometimes become hostile in our personality for no reason. Come on, y'all. And then a lot of it is passed on to us. We in the church we call it generational curses. Come on. When I first joined the military, I had no idea what a checking account was. Yeah, I'm going on this side. Because I grew up on welfare my whole life. And so when I got ready to buy my first car, the guy was like, do you have any credit? I said, what? I said, I don't have no. I knew my mama had some finger hut in my name. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I'm about to hit you. I'm about to hit go to Go to grandmama's house. There's a big wooden fork and a big wooden spoon on the wall. They got it from Finger Hut. But because my mom didn't have a checking account, because she didn't manage money, because we were written to own TVs and stuff like that, I was brought up in that. That was part of my family. My uncles, them, they ain't in here. I'm going to tell you, I have more women you can shake a stick at. <laughs> and growing up as a young man, we thought that was the... I'm trying to be honest with you now. And we were brought up in that, and we were conditioned in that, and then we didn't see the, the, the why didn't never say anything. We knew. Everybody knew. And it was passed on to us, and I spent years trying to break it off of my life. And I had to find mentors. I had to find other men and other men that was taking care of their family. And I'm not telling you I got it right every day, but I had to change while I was brought up. And we got to do a lot, come on, y'all. We got to do a lot of that in the church. My daddy wasn't at a baseball game. And if he came, he came one time. I had the testimony. He came one time, and he stayed all of about five minutes. He had to get back in his Cadillac and ride around the streets. A lot of his family history, training, mentors, life experiences. Some of us got wounds and scars that we have not let heal. And as soon as we see something that reminds us of what we've been through that wounded us, then we go back to the personality that we had to use to protect our emotions. 
Soon as we get mad, somebody going to go with me. Y'all going to turn me loose in a minute. Soon as somebody make you mad, you resort. The first thing, let me go ahead and cuss her. Am I right? I'm talking about me now. Man, I know he didn't. Man, I asked God this morning. I said, how long I got to preach? I said, how long I need to be passing? Because it's just some folks think I be playing with them. And I need you to turn me loose so I can show them why you really saved me. Ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. I said, I really need to show them how and why you saved me. And all these voices I got going on in my head. And it's by the grace of God. Come on, life experiences. And some of us, some of us, we've been brought up in households. <laughs> Your lights ain't never got cut off. And all of that makes you who you are. That when you come here to serve, God puts all of that on display. Y'all didn't catch that. This is why I tell y'all, don't try to stop nobody from coming. You don't know who God uses. And just because you're not part of the big family in certain churches, you can't do nothing. No, we want every wound. We want every situation. We want every circumstance you've ever been through. We want God to use you. It just may be your greeting, your hug, your compassion that brings and wins somebody to Christ. Come on, say amen. All right, give me, give me my scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Is that it? Therefore, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you got that? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, huh? New what? Anybody that, anybody that specializes in your past and what you've done ain't coming from God. Every saint has a past, and every sinner. Come on, baby. All right, let's do the. Let's go ahead and do the assessment. All right, now pull out your sheets. They turn the lights up. If you have a pen. Now, <clears throat> I really don't know what some of you all filled out because I didn't give you the instructions. Okay, <laughs> so the the statements. This is way, the way it should be. It shouldn't be a um, major thought process when you're filling it out. With each statement that I read, I'm going to read it. You answer it. You're going to um, put down a number or you're going to circle one through five, which what you identify with um, closely. Not what you want to, it to be. Not what your neighbor has. Is what. It truly is of you. Okay, so are we ready? Okay, go back one. Okay, first statement, you are going to circle. I'm going to read at a steady pace, and you're going to circle either from one to five, whether it's never you or whether it's always you, in a range, one, two, three, four, or five. First question, I am assertive, demanding, and decisive. I enjoy doing multiple tasks at once. I thrive in a challenge-based environment. I think about tasks above others or myself. I am motivated by accomplishment and authority. Okay, what I need you to do in that section, the highest you can have is 25. If you would add those numbers up and put that in blank one. The highest you'll have is 25. Second section. I enjoy influencing and inspiring people. I am optimistic about others. I tend to be the life of the party. I think about motivating people. I am motivated by recognition and approval. Add those numbers up, put that in blank two.
25 will be the highest again. Section 3. I thrive in consistent environments over changing ones. I prefer specifics over generalizations. I enjoy small groups of people. I prefer being a member of a team over leading the team. I am motivated by stability and support. Add those up. Put that in the, in the blank for number three. Number four, I typically do not take big risks. I love task, order, and details. I am right most of the time. I comply with clearly defined rules. I am motivated by quality and correctness. Add those up. And put that in the blank. Okay, only if you uh, subscribe, um, to, <laughs> subscribe to this channel uh, will you get the full definition of your answers. However, you will be able to see at this point where your highest points are. So it may be, it won't be just a D. You're going to have a couple of, of ties. So you may have 23 points for D and you may have 20 points for I. So your personality is a D slash I. Okay. A D slash I. All right. So you may have a couple of uh, variations if you have several ties. However, again, uh, when you register for the course, you will get your interpretation also, it describes your personality in, in depth. It also gives you a scripture reference, and it will also give you someone in the Bible who has that same personality trait. So even though you think you have a poor personality, there is someone in the Bible that identifies with each of you. All right, so um, I'm just going to uh, show you this quickly. It gives you a couple of um, key points. If you know you a D without looking, how about listen more, talk less? If you a D and you know you are D, okay, develop a greater appreciation for others. All right, support others. Everybody else on the team has valuable ideas. Now, this happens in any of the ministries that we have, and I think it's a good life lesson for us because Bishop says he does not do divisiveness. We are a nice church. We're a kind church. Everybody matters. All right, I. Next one. All right, so it says these are the I, very inspiring. Again, you're going to meet a lot, but you're not going to get a lot accomplished. Okay, so talk less, listen more. Slow down your pace because you have all these thoughts in your head, um, but nobody's able to follow you, okay, because you're all over the place. Um, you're going to talk for an hour in the meeting, but y'all didn't accomplish anything. Y'all didn't decide anything, okay? Um, help with the task more instead of having all the ideas. All right, next slide. S's. All right, these are the ones steady people. You got to realize change is inevitable. It's okay to change. It's okay for things to be done a little bit more differently. And then also try to accept it um, and try not to have such a hard time with it. So more directing your actions with things, um, develop more flexibility, and try to show more initiative. Initiative is change. All right, see? All right, these are the ones that are very compliant. All right, always by the book. All right, try to concentrate on doing right things, not always things right. Okay, there, there are great lines in things. Uh, be less critical of others. Be more decisive. Um, respond more quickly to accomplish the goals. Um, and try to focus less on facts and more on people. So of the four personality types that we have, your D's and your C's are worried about getting the job done. If you're a straight D or a straight C, 
your I and your S really more worried about people. So you need to develop a balance with those two. Look what it says, John 14, 12. We're almost done. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And what? If you've been sitting around and God have not been using you, I came to tell you to get ready for greater works. It is time for us to take our life, turn it back around to serve the Lord. I got one more scripture. We got, we, oh, don't I have another one? Probably on Pro Presenter. I'll read it. It's a message translation, Philippians 3.13 through 16. I'm not saying that I have all this together, that I have made it, that I have it made, but I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal. Where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus, I am off and running. I am not turning back. So let's keep focus on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You will see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. Amen. Philippians 3, 13 through 16. Come on, stand all over the building. I want to thank you for your patience. I know this may not be the jumping up and down that some of you came for if you're visiting for the first time. But our main goal is to serve this community. And I'm excited about those that I'm going to be serving alongside. Look at me. You don't serve me. We serve together. I, I'm not your God. I'm just a man, just like a man that's in here. I'm just a human, just like the rest of you all. I pray for myself before I pray for you all. I am not perfect. I've made mistakes. I will make mistakes. I get it wrong sometime. But there's a love in my heart for God and God's people that no matter how many times I get knocked down, I get back up. And I bring that out to say this because there may be some of you that are thinking that you don't qualify, that you don't look the church type, that you've always been counted out and you've been ostracized. I came to tell you your moment of truth is here. No more disclaimer. You are worthy of God's love. And I need to tell you this. Thou sins are forgiven. Do you hear what I said? Thou sins are forgiven. There's nothing that you can do to stop God from loving you. The Bible says that your husband is your maker. God is your, he's married to you. He's in covenant with you. No matter how many times you try to walk out on him, he's walking right behind you, telling you to come back home. This is your moment. If you're not saved, if you're ready to serve in ministry, if you don't have a church home, you've never been accepted anywhere else. When the ministry begins to sing and you feel led to, make your way to this altar. We just need five more minutes. It's a little long, but this is the longest it's probably going to be when we do these assessments. Give us five minutes that we can win a soul. We can bring someone back home to serve the Lord. Amen. Come on, singers. <laughs>